Hello there, welcome to another installment of your one number one Q Sports show. It is Q Sports on Asian Television. My name is Gideon Lamiron. Welcome to another edition. Yeah, welcome on board. We're back on the pro. Ain't nobody stopping us now. We are on the move. Of course, irrespective of the situation, we are on the move. Okay, yes, today I'm back on the sets and the regulars are not complete anyway. Uh, but I have the amazing Joaquin Dad on the set with me. Joe, how are you doing? My pleasure as usual. My pleasure. It's good to have Joe. We are here to serve you the best of Q Sports Gist. Welcome once again. And it is Asset Television. Don't forget, you can join us by liking our YouTube channel. You can tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell them, everyone that you know, tell them to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Asset TV, for the best of Q Sports content and other interesting content. Welcome once again. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about the Snooker Pool Players Alliance that you are the president and let's talk about what we've done in the past. We've done some amazing shows, some amazing programs in terms of competition. And let's just break down the ones we've done. We've done the Interbar, the top four, and some other uh, championship that's been held, you know, by uh, the, the Pool, uh, Snooker Pool Player Alliance, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's just start with, maybe I should start with, uh, let's start with um, the Interbar first. Okay. So, uh, let's do good. First of all, we should, we should understand that there is no way you can develop Q Sports mm. without going to the grassroots. And when you're talking about the grassroots, when it comes to Q Sports, the grassroots is where is the bar. Mm. Because the bar is the natural home of pool and snooker. So if you will develop anything that relates to snooker or pool, then you must work with the bars. And that was what made the Snooker Pool Players Alliance to partner with a couple of bars to hold the first ed edition of the Interbar, uh, Interbar tournament, mm -hmm. where three bars were invited to come in and come and showcase, allow their strong players. I, sometimes I, 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 I don't like using the word best. Okay. Because right. I use the word best. Best sometimes is it's it's relative. It's relative. relative because yeah. sometimes you might not be feeling, you might be under the weather mm -hmm. during the tournament. Okay. Uh, you might be under pressure during the tournament. So even if you are very, very good at that particular time, you might not be showing, putting your best. So, most of the time, I always describe it as what? The, the top players in the bar. So we brought them in, three bars, three players, and they squared it out. And it was fun. It was really fun seeing these players play. And it is, for me, I look at it as it's a way of growing the league. It's a way of growing the league because there is no way we can, we can grow a league. Unlike where you have in some other sports. Then you have things like clubs. So uh, in pool and snooker, rather have uh, clubs, uh, we look at it more like you have bars. Mm. So a bar is synonymous with being a club. Okay. So a bar can have a couple of players. So we are looking at in the alliance, we are looking at the possibility of having individual players coming from the bar to play in Taba. And we're also looking at the problem of launching the team version of it. We are not only the top players from the bar come and play, a bar can have a team of like five players. Okay. They come and score it out, challenge each other and play. And it's going to be it's going to be fun. The first one we heard, which was in 2019. Mm -hmm. 2020, we couldn't do much because of everybody knows yeah, what happened with the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of the things we wanted to do, we could not do because of the pandemic. But in 2021, as the pandemic and these COVID things begin to wear out, anyway. we now begin to launch it. And that is why we now look at the possibility of introducing virtual pool. Okay. So that the, the issues relating to pandemic, all the social distancing, what is you don't have, you can't have a lot of people in a space. Uh, that was how we introduced, we think we are introducing the virtual pool to give people an opportunity to play against each other without having to be, without playing face to face. 
and even the, 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 the reality is that uh, this is the new normal and uh, we might be having this uh, the virus for a long time so, really and long just time. like sports are gradually returning don't forget that just a few months ago uh, yeah we had uh, the Moscone Cup the love yes, the so Cup. the sports will be getting back you just can't go on, uh, a lot of things, on a break for a long time a lot of this we are seeing evolution in mm -hmm. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. As much as things will still go back to normal, but it is some of the innovation that that has been introduced as a result of the pandemic. They will not go away. Mm -hmm. Like example, if you look at it, like in other sports, like I talk of darts, where you have what you call home play, right. where people can play against each other from home. Okay. I doubt if the professional darts corporation that introduced home play and followership is. You will be able to Ghana. In Ghana. Uh, then, yeah. I doubt if, if because under the home play of that, you, you, you saw the opportunity where people from all over the world, mm -hmm. you can play against each other without having to spend all your money on tickets, hotel, and all of that. Yeah? So because technology has, has brought about a lot of things. And that is what, I'm, that's what we are trying to do here locally. Mm -hmm. Locally, we are trying to, we are trying to align to international best practice. So we now have, like, uh, like I said earlier, in Taba, the, the, the bars played against each other in 2019. Okay. In 2021, we are going to still bring out in Taba. Okay. We are going to have the, um, the, 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 the individuals, the singles, and we are going to have the team version of it, where a bar will bring in a team of like five players who will who will play the other? All right, that's it. from there. Also, I'm aware uh, we also had uh, the Super Four or the Top Four, rather. Right? Yeah. Uh, at some point, uh, we had a side uh, that's one of the championship. What was the idea then? Also, talking about the good old days. Yes, in 20, in 2018, or uh, one of the greatest challenges we have found in most sports in Nigeria, even in, and we won't say Q Sports is left out of it, is our inability to develop what we call a ranking scale. Okay. A way of testing the proficiencies of our players. First locally, then in Africa, then globally, internationally. So you see, in most sports all over the world, there is always ranking. Rank, the ranking scale is one of the requirements, as far as I'm concerned, for any game to transit from being a game to becoming a sport there must be a ranking scale. Mm. So you must have number one, number two, number three, and they must know themselves. For one, for bragging rights. Two, because it also helps to promote the sport. It helps to, for branding and all of that. So in Nigeria, in 2018 through to 2019, one of the things we worked on was to develop what I call a ranking system for Nigeria. And we successfully did that. It's computerized. There's no pranks. Nobody is giving any individual a free point. Mm -hmm. Nobody is giving any individual a free mark. So through the ranking scale, we now have people who we classify. You are number one. You are number two. You are number three. Number four. And that is why Wale Oshomo became number one mm -hmm. because the ranking scale, based on his performance, even in his local bar. Then I come from his local bar to tournaments and all that, he is classified as number one. His point is up there. I think right now he's close to, he's not, he has not got to the 2000 because for 2000, 2000 on the ranking scale automatically makes you, in quotes, an amateur player. Mm. So most people are still under 2000 and like, the ranking classifies them more like leisure players. Okay. But when they get to 2000, we look at it as you are now getting serious. We are now becoming an amateur player. And that, so from that, we got the top four. So every month in 2019, it was the last quarter, or the last quarter of 2019, that we had the opportunity of holding two editions of top four. Okay. So the top four players, the top four players on the ranking scale, uh, on the ranking scale, they are invited to come and play in a competition that we call the top four challenge. Uh -huh. Eight balls. So you have, and remember that when we talk of Q sports, there are different versions of Q sports. Mm -hmm. There's eight ball, there's nine, nine ball, and there's black ball. Mm -hmm. So for, for us, what we're doing 
currently in Nigeria because anyone in the most popular version of kill sports that is played in Nigeria okay. will be top four of Edo. So we have the top four tournament where we invited uh, Charles Agbezi, uh, Daniel Ebuwe, uh, Obaro Obuse, and uh, those are the three players that meet the courts. They made the courts and we invited them to come and play in the top four challenge. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think it was Charles Agbezi came out top after that event. So it was a great event, beautiful, and the players, uh, they, they showed that it proved one thing to us that we have some players that have skill in Nigeria. All right. Of course, you, you've been able to break down the Interbar. You also just uh, broke down the top four now. Uh, the Open Championship, so at some point, I think you lost yes, that. Yes, too. yes. The Open Championship, did, championship was championship. like an all commas affair. Where yes, uh, yes. As long as you can, you're good, you can. We did an Open Championship, but the way we work in the, for the SBAA, the way we do the Open Championship is we try to partner with the bar mm. and we localize the Open Championship. So, we, we most of the time we allow players in the bar to come together and play. Okay. Like an Open Championship. Okay. But for 2021, we are hoping that because of the Chinese aid ball pool uh -huh. that is coming on board, mm -hmm. we are looking at holding what you call actual Open Championship. Okay. Where anybody from anywhere can come and play. But the important thing is that if you are not a rank player, you are not a rank player, you will not see that. Okay. You can play. But you know it's seeded. Seeded. Okay. So for FPA players, they are seeded. And some of them, because of their seeded, they, they, they might come out in the round, they might come to the game in the round of 16 before you go into uh, uh, quarter finals, semi finals, and most likely the finals. Don't you think that uh, the number of entries might change the aspect of uh, some of those games? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for now, Many players in Nigeria play pool for leisure. Okay. And they also play pool because it has the given the opportunity of you know we talk about the betting opportunity. Mm -hmm. But the SP, S, the Suka pool players that are like the SPPA is more interested at pool and snooker as sports. Okay. As sports. Because um, we are hoping that in the next couple of years, two years down the line, we should have Nigerian players play either professionally or semi-professionally mm. on the African continent. You can travel to Ghana, you can travel to Egypt, you can travel to South Africa. You know in South Africa they are very strong in pool. Mm -hmm. They can travel around and they can go with the backing of their life. Yeah, okay. Hoping that once they we, the important is that we are just trying to, to, to register our name. Mm -hmm. First of all, we want, we want Nigeria to register its name on the African continent. Right. right now, a lot of things say it locally, and that's how we are trying to restructure few sports. That is snooker, room players. Alright, but fortunately, uh, Nigerian players might be fortunate because the way it is now, you might find yourself playing beyond the church of uh, in the continent of Africa, going by what the Snooker and play, Pool Players Alliance is putting together. 2021, those who will be playing in the, uh, the, um, the SPA organized tournament might find themselves playing in Asia. Yes. Uh, of course, that will be massive. Yeah, that's massive. Mm -hmm. It will be short, you know that. We will discuss that as well when it comes to Chinese people. All right, next, we'll go on a short break, and when we come back, we're still on the show. Q-Spot on Asset Television. Don't go away.